And any film, whether it's a trivial comedy or a historical epic, is in some way connected with the political activity of that country. Now, if you make a film, for instance, in which uh, Negroes are presented not as a different kind of person, but just an ordinary person like everybody else, that is a social act, and it will have all kinds of political repercussions. Now, in a film like Gone with the Wind, the aristocratic Old South is the uh, subject. Certain aspects of it were omitted, others emphasized. And in those emphases, in those omissions, politics express themselves. Politics are how we organize ourselves, and in every form of expression, in every art, every word we utter, in some way contributes to the political scene. You can't keep out of it. Mr. Thainan, when I got the idea of doing the best years of our life, what I understand you liked, yes, tremendous. I did not think of politics. I only thought of what's going to happen to these people when they return from the war the disabled veterans, and so on and so forth. I never injected politics in. But it did explain to you how American society worked. And that was a tremendously important thing. Uh, Miss Lee, do you think movies, or for that matter the theater, ought to have a point of view? I do. Well, this I, had a point of view. I do. In fact, I agree with Ken that they, they have a point of view whether they really want to or not. Because any good playwright cannot help being taken up with uh, the way the world is going. And I suppose politics come into that. I know nothing about politics, and I don't think I like them at all. But I think that um, the social conditions in every country are bound to come into any play of any interest. Whether it's brought in or not, pure propaganda, I naturally don't like, because I think it's always pretty dull. But I think it comes into any play or any movie, whether that movie sets out to put it in or not. Because I think any dramatist of any stature naturally deals with the world as he sees it. Now, Mr. Goldwyn, yes. didn't you have a point of view when you decided to do Porgy and Bess? Yes. I felt that this was, to begin with, the first great American opera it was written. And secondly, I wanted the public to see the Negroes as they are. I should have said it, it simply showed him as he used to be. And I would have thought that um, in spite of your, uh, your obviously sincere beliefs that uh, politics hasn't any place in the industry, uh, I think you will find, and perhaps have found, that a great many people will interpret your film in a social or political terms. No. You see, it shows us Negroes as downtrodden, uh, dope fiends, uh, um, it's a very slanted and uh, unfair picture of uh, colored uh, activities. Don't I, take... I beg your pardon. No, I don't. I, I, I am sorry. First of all, my story is laid in the period of 1900 when, as it was written. Secondly, you might as well say that the public today do not understand Shakespeare or some of the great things that have been written in the past 100 or 200 years. I, I cannot agree with that at all. I think the idea is to lead him into that period and stick to the period and don't get out of it. And I think you have a chance to succeed. Somebody remarked to me that, um, the other day, perhaps a little unjustly, um, I see that Uncle Sam is about to, uh, to give us Uncle Tom. Now that may be going a bit too far, but perhaps not a great deal too far. Mr. Tainan, it's the charming, it's the naive, of the Negro in that period that makes this almost a fantasy. But a, a fantasy must have a certain sense of reality. And I don't think politics or anything that you're talking about had anything to do with that play whatsoever. The idea is to do it better. And the screen has a has greater opportunity than the stage has. And especially when I did this picture in Tadeo, which has six soundtracks, and Mr. Ira Gershwin sat in the projecting room and I showed him some of it in Tadeo. And the remark he made was, I only wish that George was alive and he could hear this music, his music played on six tracks. Now, and May see the people. Yes, Miss Lee. Please, uh, Mr. Gomez just said something 
uh, that I don't agree with at all, because uh, he says that the pictures can do something better. I think they can do it differently, but it doesn't necessarily mean better. I, I don't agree with that at all. They just do it in a different way. Well, making a movie out of an opera like Porgy and Bess is certainly different. It'll be interesting to see whether it's better. People have been afraid in our business to do opera. But I felt it's a contribution I'd like to make because this business has been very good to me and I felt I owe them something. So I spent about seven, eight million dollars and I have to get back about 16 million to break even in order to prove that it can be done successfully and it can be better than what the stage has done and I am hoping that the public will agree with me and if they don't agree with me it'll be just too bad for Goldwyn. Now Sam are you going to As do... As a matter of fact when I produce a picture I don't usually worry how it's going to be a box office success or not because the minute anyone starts making a picture and things of the box office they're 90 percent a failure before they start. This uh, little motion picture starring Samuel Goldwyn, Vivian Lee, and Kenneth Tynan will continue immediately after this word from Olin Matheson. Now, back to Edward R. Murrow and Small World. Go ahead, Mr. Tynan. Are you ever embarrassed, Mr. Goldwyn, when the artistic success of your films is ascribed not to the director or the author or the star, but to uh, you yourself, who really haven't taken an active, creative role in the uh, picture? I've seen a great many films coming out of all kinds of other countries, Italy, um, France, even your own country, Mr. Goldwyn, Poland. And uh, especially um, out of your own country, the films nowadays are absolutely fantastically good. And still, um, I don't think I could name for you who produced any of these films, Italian or French or Polish. Nobody seems to care about that job. Whereas here, it's the absolute top. But I can't think of any other country where, where it is um, Samuel Goldwyn um, the presents. I agree with you, and I know that some very brilliant pictures come out of France, come out of England, come out of Russia. I see most of them. As a matter of fact, I'm seeing one tonight. But Sam, Mr. Tynan's question was, why is it that the producer in this country got so much more public credit than he does in foreign countries? My dear fellow, I can only talk about myself at this point. I've been at it for 47 years. I started when there were pictures ran 10 minutes. And now they run 10 hours. Unfortunately, they don't remember me, that's all. People are known by the work they do. We've got one pretty good producer in England who's been heard of, it seems to me, Ken. And his name is uh, Laurence Olivier. Oh, yes. yes. Pretty good director, too. Brilliant. I consider Larry a great producer. I consider him one of the great actors we have in our in present generation. I have great respect for him. But how many are they? Chaplin was one of them. And you may find one or two more. But how many actors are really producers? Orson Welles. Very good. Orson Welles, unfortunately, has not proven successful in that direction. Oh, I disagree with you, Chelsea.